her worst fears also confirmed. Flags across the country have been ordered at half staff this morning to honor all the victims. Things like these, Jason, raise so many questions for so many of us, many conversations continuing today. Joining us is John Matthews this morning. He's a security expert who has written books on mass shootings and also a former Dallas police officer. So, John, this is clearly a very complex investigation. You have a high death toll. You have a shooter who appears to be a lone wolf who is self-radicalized who is also dead. So as the investigation continues this morning, what is it that officials will be focusing on first? Well, they've got two parts. The micro-investigation that's going on inside the club to find out exactly what happened, how it played out, and what we can learn from it. And the macro investigation, which we're still looking at imminent threats, even though he was self-radicalized, did he act alone? Was he part of a larger plot? Where did he obtain the weapons? And where did he obtain the training? Uh, he must have been very highly trained to fire that many rounds in that short of a period of time, you know, with magazine changes and everything else he had to do. So that's the two investigations that are going on right now. We want to make sure there's not another imminent threat about a plot to kill Americans. Or possibly copycat Copycats too. Right. We have that after almost every mass shooting. We hear from copycats and say, I want to be infamous too. And we also know that the FBI, this guy slipped at the cracks. The FBI had interviewed him three times since 2013. He had purchased guns legally in the past week before he committed this terrible mass shooting. So... Why, when he had been on the radar, was he not under surveillance? How did this happen? Well, the FBI said that they didn't have enough information at the time. During uh, 2013 and 2014, when they investigated him, uh, apparently there wasn't enough to, to uh, charge him with any particular crime, and he kind of dropped off the radar. I think we need to have more investigative tools so we can keep more people under surveillance and find out, you know, is something going on to prevent this from happening in the future? I think that so many Americans find this notion of a lone wolf so frightening because they are so difficult to pinpoint at times for the FBI. We know that whenever you go to school, you go to a movie theater, perhaps a performance, uh, to the shopping center, you are vulnerable. So how as Americans can we keep ourselves safe? Well, any public place. And I want to know about that to take my family. So we practice situational awareness. When you go into a public event, where are your exits? How can you get out? Do you have a place to find cover? Can you hide behind something that's going to stop the bullets? Uh, in the nightclub, a bartender grabbed about 10 people and pushed them behind a bar to stop the bullets and save their lives. The other thing, we may not want to hear about it, but individuals in the nightclub, in the movie theater in Colorado, hid behind friends, pulled bodies over themselves to protect themselves from bullets. So you got to know there are things that we can do. Exit the scene as quickly as possible. Find cover if you can. And at the very least, find concealment. Get out of the line of the sight of the shooter. If the shooter can't see you, your chances for surviving the incident will grow exponentially. Very good advice on situational awareness. John Matthews, thank you so much for joining us. Some, some, some painful lessons to be learned from what happened in Orlando. Let's go ahead.